We thank God for Jesus. We thank God for praise and worship. Um, you have a, uh, we, we're muted. You can mute yourself uh, where it is um, not a uh, distraction to Zoom. Zoom is one of those platforms that pick up um, everything being said. And so you can mute yourself. Well, you are muted. And you can sing along and worship God. Um, we, First Lady, made a point of saying that we generally sing the same songs enough that people should know them. Uh, you know, one of my desires is that we can take part in worship, um, meaning that we know the the worship songs. Now we can um, we can um, take part in worship, um, not just treat it as a show or some kind of a uh, assembly where we're spectators, but to um, to spend time in worship, um, 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 rather, whether we're at home or at church. Where you can lift your hands before the Lord and find your your you know I don't know everybody's homes are different, but you could find where you need to be to the worship is um is something I think is a relationship that you literally have a relationship with worship, uh, not just do worship but have a relationship, and I've never seen a time more important to have that kind of relationship than times like these. But uh, we thank God as we just listen to God to see what thus said the Lord for this particular setting tonight. But uh, one of the things uh, the Lord impressed upon me was um, how faith is something, uh, if we can just spend time together before we pray, how faith is something that you don't always lose it. You, you know, it's not like people always lose their faith. But things need restored and replenished, revived. And, you know, there, there, there's a need to, to not look at people with the mentality that they have no faith, but to, but to see the battles and the test uh, as it relates to time. And how some 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 of our faith um, is tired, if I can say that, it's a little worn and tired, and we we do want to be careful with that because when your faith takes a blow or get beat up, so to say, um, it's good to have your feet on the ground because when your spiritual feet are on the ground. You don't just imagine the outcome of a thing, especially when you are constantly saying, nevertheless, thy will be done. Um, who know of the mind of God except the son? And you don't just have a prayer. Uh, Jesus always our role model who asked the Father to let the cup pass from him. In other words, when he really was, in, as much as God allowed him to, see the anguish of the cross of, in, of Calvary and to really behold some things that was coming, even though, you know, he um, was built up he had the Mount Transfiguration experience, and he had the wilderness experience. He had the prophecies of his mom and dad and auntie and uncle. He had the forerunner of John the Baptist. Um, he saw he worked the works his father sent him to work, and in whom the father was, you know, well pleased. And yet found himself praying as we see his humanity um, be at war with his spirit. And when, we, when we can see that Christ's humanity 
warred against the spirit and the spirit against the humanity or against the flesh. To ask a group of men to pray with him and then to ask God or the Father to let the cup pass from him um, or find another way to redeem man. But then to, in my mind, I've, I've always, I've never heard it ministered, not that we're trying to be um, groundbreakers, but we are forerunners. I've never heard anyone minister to me that when Christ declared, but nevertheless, thy will be done, that he was actually you know, saying whatever, but nevertheless, your will be done, yielding to the will of God. Uh, I see it more as Christ acknowledging that the purpose by which I am here, no matter what I'm saying now, you're going, your will is going to be done. Not necessarily yielding, but acknowledging that no matter what I'm saying, your will is going to be done. And when your feet on the ground, that's your blueprint. This keeps us having realistic spiritual goals. And this keeps us not being disappointed at the outcome God have, des have designed and chosen. Uh, many Christians who became angry with God is because they uh, assumed a different outcome. Uh, they, and sometimes, it, you know, it was justified when you trust people who you say uh, know more about God than you. And they prophesy to you a lie. The, the Bible talked about the, how they are prophesying to my people lies. I didn't say it. Oh, and I didn't. So when people prophesy lies, uh, I'm reminded when my son was in a hospital, I told my daughter, I'm his pastor and his spiritual dad. Um, he had two. He had my spiritual father and he had me. I said to her in the hospital, I don't care what anyone pray. I don't care what anyone prophesy. Until I tell you he good, he's not good. Until I tell you. I won't, I won't tell you a lie, uh, Miha. He in trouble. When I say to my wife, his body is hurting. His, his kidneys giving me problems. She said, no, they, they said they didn't, they didn't say anything wrong with his kidneys. They, they, they didn't say anything was wrong with his kidneys. And I understood her taking that posture. But I am his pastor and his spiritual father. And I'm apostolic prophetic. And I'm saying we in trouble in our kidneys. I'm hurting. Then the doctor say, a day or two later, he looked strong, but your son is sick. He lived hard. He was drinking a lot and living hard. I said, yeah, I know. He said, his, kid, his kidney is not responding to treatment. I said, I know. But my feet on the ground and I'm in a secret place and I won't prophesy a lot. I had prayers upon prayers that I wanted God to do for me. Um, but I understood at the end it would be his will. Then I understood that Josh was saved. And so he and the Lord had their own conversations going on. And, and, and so when you don't build castles in the sky and move in, when you keep your feet on the ground, 
you're least likely to be disappointed at outcomes. Uh, you you may not like it or uh, or it's not what you would have chosen, but it's not a I'm so disappointed in in this because I thought because I thought you know and what I thought is in total opposition to what actually happened and so there's a people who they're like you have some who I like Minister Mari was ministering about working the brain. And, and every time you have to work the brain, you make the brain stronger. But like that was hard for you, right? Yes. But look how you made your brain stronger. Well, your faith grow by a series of events and, and a series of circumstances. And your faith is like a seed. It, 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 it must grow. David don't deal with Goliath before he deal with a lion and a bear, before his faith is at a level where he stands before men and say, a bear took one of God's sheep, a lion took one of the sheep, and I killed them both. I killed a lion and a bear for messing with God's sheep. We got our sheep. So what's it to me to deal with Goliath, that sinner, or that uncircumcised Philistian. He don't even have a covenant with the Lord. He uncircumcised. All of us with a covenant have our foreskin circumcised. That's what he was saying. He said he's he don't have a covenant. He don't bear the mark in, of a covenant. What am I scared of that uncircumcised Philistian? Why are you afraid of them? Go fight them. I'll do it. Well, you just a kid, a, a lad, a, a boy. Yeah, one who killed a lion and a bear for messing with God's sheep. One birthed out before God and not before man. And so I'll do it. I'll fight him. He's uncircumcised. He don't have God on his side. And so his faith grew by events. From, you know, faith, from faith to faith and glory to glory, it grew by events. And so there are times that you need your faith, not that you don't have it. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 8, 26, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? He says in Matthew 14, 31, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? He says in Matthew 16, 8, O you of little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves the fact that you have no bread? Why are you talking among yourself, O you of little faith? And so he points out to us that you can't be in a place where you have little faith. But then he kind of lets us know that little faith puts us in a certain mentality of fear, you know, of not trusting God and believing him for a for a for an, an outcome, a, a, ple a pleasing outcome, you, you know, um, one that benefits us. He 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 lets us know that there's a group of believers who could be in a place where they lack experiences and the faith just have not had a chance to grow, or they faith have taken a beating along the way, and they have found themselves where he may he may not. I hope I really don't think so though. Well, I'm not holding my breath, even though they may not say it. Now, the importance of me starting a dialogue off with that is because it takes faith. This is where we want to go before we pray. It takes faith to believe God to fill us with his presence or fill us with his Holy Spirit. It takes faith. Now, I know someone said, how do we get there? Because it takes faith to believe God 
for what God have promised he want for his people. It take faith. It take faith. It, take, it takes faith to know that God want us all filled with his holy presence. Now, you have to be careful of this age because uh, I understand modern day te teaching. And one day I was, uh, I don't know what I was talking about, what was going on. And Minister Amari pointed out to me that it's okay to not be okay. She said, well, it's okay to not be okay. Modern day teaching, but it's okay to not be okay until it's not, until it's not okay. Now, who writes the book that decides, oh, uh oh, now it's not okay to, to not be okay? Who tells you what the time zone is? While you've accepted the mentality is okay to not be okay, well, at what point? Is it, uh oh, well, now it's not okay to not be okay? Who decides? Is it when the wife walk in and say, okay, I need you to, I need you to be okay now, husband. These bills piling up. I need you to go back to work. Hey, wife, I need you to be okay now. I can't keep being nervous going to work with this postpartum depression everywhere. I need you to, I need you to be okay now. Like, like who decides? Who, 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 like, come on son I need you okay now come on it, it, I, it, listen it was okay to not be okay until today today is not okay to not be okay you know like who decides what's the time what's the time limit how much time do I have to not be okay see, see because uh, 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 some of us uh, when do we when do we have space to not be okay or like when do, when do when do our faith have a chance to not be faith? It's okay to to not for your faith to not always be faith. Or it's okay for your faith to be small. You know, it's okay for your faith to be little. Like until until when? Until, until when? So I know. What's the time limit? You, and, and see, the more you l live this life and gain knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, the better you are. It's like there are situations that make people who they are. For example, life, move, life don't stop. And so if I have to bury my son today, and then a month later or something, be responsible for going to my sister's wedding rehearsal, you know, whatever, three weeks or a month, whatever it was, I don't know, still grieving. If I need a man there, but I don't know I need him, but a preacher there whose daughter died said, can I pray for you? And I don't know I need right now him to help me bear my burden because I'm not birthed out that way. But, but once he started praying, I see I need help today. Life don't stop as I walk my sister down the aisle. In the smile through the tears because my baby missing and I'm grieving. Life don't stop. Like, is, is, is it okay to, to not have faith right now? Is it, is it okay to quit? Is it okay? Or is it not for some of us? Like, is it okay? The first lady told you Sunday, she, she, uh, she preached standing there with shingles. Some people don't know what that means. Because they never had it or had a relative with it. But it's extremely taxing on the body and painful. But it's just like when my son died. We had a we had a little time to cry. And then we had to open the doors to the daycare. And I had to do transportation. She had children while we were still crying. Is it okay to not be okay? Or to not have the faith I need today? Or can I check out? Tap out? You know, people, people, people care and love us and care about us. You know, people love us and everything, but I still have to walk my sister down that aisle and take those pictures.
and be responsible as a pastor and a and a and a and a and a, and a husband and a dad and a and a brother and a son. It takes faith. Take a relationship and faith and Holy Ghost. You, 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 I know what I want. You know, you can you can know what you want to make things smoother. I know I want right now uh, my daycare in my church, renting from my church with the right kind of staff that first lady could have took a week or two off, you know, to get herself together. But but God know the things we have need of before we ask, and, and he know when we need to bear one another's burden. So he give me daughter Kathy this week. He give me daughter Mari schedule flexible this week. He give me daughter Kwanya. You know, in, in prayer, I ask for what I need, even though it, it, it looked like it's coming to first lady, but he give me what I need for her. But faith, exercise, with the mentality, I, I, I don't know when it's okay to not be okay. I just don't want to be not okay. And be, waiting on someone to walk up and tell me, you need to be okay today. But I thought it's okay to not be okay. When Who told me to my time up? I thought I could have a little faith right now. Who told me my time up? Then this modern day teaching that make you wiser but weaker. Wiser but weaker. And the Holy Spirit to look out at a people and say, everyone filled with the Holy Spirit or everyone who have their prayer language praying now in the Holy Ghost. And, and, and then 5% of the church can do it. I'm not saying they don't have the Holy Ghost. But. See, see God loves us. He says in Matthew 6.30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into an oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O oh, you a little faith? Won't he look out for you? Well, he says in Mark 16, 17, and 18, Mark 16, 17, and 18, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Now, am I saying that, that, that everything is for everyone? No, I'm not saying that. Just like he give you, yeah, just like he give you apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists for the perfecting of the church, and they are the same thing, or or, or or maybe they could do two, or, you know, two or three of the of the same works as the other one. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And we have these spiritual martyr day serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, there are levels to this thing. How do, The Bible said one laid his head on Jesus' breast, one whom Jesus loved that means that he particularly specified uh, that John, the beloved, I love him. I love them all, but man, I love this one. You can have that going on. You can have someone with no faith. Believer. Another one with little faith. Believer. Another one with, like in the middle faith. Believer. Another one with big faith. Now, I said before and I say again, I'd rather have little faith in a big guy then big faith in a little guy. I, I'd rather have mustard seed faith that I know a mustard seed will grow in a big God. Then I have all this big faith in a little God, but that's just me. I want and I need everything God promised me. I want and I need everything he promised me. I want it and I need it. He said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you in Acts 1 and 8, that you will receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Like, like whatever you think you have, it's nothing compared to what you will have after the Holy Ghost come upon you.
It's similar to and likened to, and the spirit would come upon Samson. And when it would come upon Samson, he would become another man. This is why he said, I shall shake myself as other times and shake it up and quicken the spirit. I shall do it like us as other times. And whence not knew or did not know that the spirit had departed from him. That everything you did was the spirit, brother. Now the spirit is gone. And they're gonna cut, they're gonna cut you, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna cut your hair and take your eyes out your face. Or they're gonna cut your hair, now they're gonna take your eyes out of your face. You're not the same man without the spirit. You one man with the spirit. You're not the same man. Now God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. People tell once saved, always saved. Once you have the spirit, you'll always have the spirit. There's a reason why he talked to us about a dog uh, returning to his vomit. It, no man who haven't put his hand to the plow and look back is fit for the kingdom of God. And, uh, and, 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 and there are some like it to return it to their own vomit. No one who tastes of the heavenly gifts and look back, it, and, and who tasted of the heavenly gifts, like some, you 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 charging them wrong. They never had the Holy Ghost and they never tasted up the heavenly gifts. But some who have had the Holy Spirit and tasted up the heavenly gifts, and now walk contrary to that. It's a price tag for that. But there are many who are struggling in, 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 with things that they don't tell you from the from the mental aspect of it to the emotional aspect of it you know the spiritual aspect of it you know um, they, they they have a whole training i know they do because we did it on conflict resolution several people may have the next week or two had the worst argument in the world with someone because it's harder and to work against you when you don't operate in what you know now knowledge is to know we give you the skill set now you know how to deal with conflict resolution. But wisdom is what to do about what you know. So a lot of people show they don't have wisdom because when it was time to exercise conflict resolution skills, they couldn't do it. Well, they chose not to. But the Holy Ghost, he'll quicken you. John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now that's very key because now the Holy Ghost not bring it to your remembrance what he talked to me about. He bring it to your remembrance what he talked to you about. That's key to understand that the Holy Ghost will comfort you. He's the comforter. I will not leave you comfortless, but I shall leave, send you the comforter and he shall comfort you. As a matter of fact, if I stay, he won't come. I have to leave for him to come. He looks at the people and says, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. But then he said, whatsoever I have said unto you. That means he's not necessarily reminding everyone of the same thing because he hasn't said the same thing to everyone. But yet he is there. He, he is the quiet, powerful, important, unseen host. And it's important to, it, 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 now it takes faith to receive the Holy Ghost. To, to know you're going to lift your hands up and God is going to pour out his spirit upon you, upon all flesh, that he want to. He said, I won't leave you comfortless in John 14 and 8. I will come to you. Now, what he means there is I will not leave you as orphans. I won't leave you as if you have no parent. If, if your mother and father forsake you, then the Lord takes you up. 
It don't mean he don't take you up other than that, but just know he won't leave you orphans. He'll take you up quicker when you have been forsaken by parents. Can a mother forget the baby that sucked from her breast? Though she can forget, the Bible says. I, how can she forget a baby who sucked from her breast, Lord? How? What kind of damage? What kind of stress and trauma? What kind of addiction? What, what could drive her to forget that? He says she will forget. She can forget. But I will not forget, for I have tattooed you or carved, which means tattoo, you on the palms of my hand. He looks at the people and he said, "You, my children are never allowed to be orphans. When you don't have the presence of the Lord, you walk around as an uncovered, unparented Christian. Now, everything can say they're Christians today. Everything. They're saying it. But they will not say they've been born again. Because when you talk about being born again, you're actually acknowledging I had a nature that was not fit for God or the kingdom of heaven. I had a nature and iniquity and sin was I, con was I conceived and I had a nature, a filthy, nasty, unclean nature. I had things that I wanted to do and was doing. I had a life I was living that was contrary to the word of God and his will for my life. So I had to be born again. That which is spirit is spirit, but that which is flesh is flesh. Can a man go in his mother womb a second time and be born? It don't matter if he go a thousand times, Nicodemus. What's Flesh is flesh. He's still coming out flesh with 206 bones. He's still coming out with a digestive system. He's still coming out with a cerebrum and a cerebellum and a brain stem. He's still coming out with a cervix and a, and a vagina. She's still coming out with a cervix and a vagina. Like it, 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 she, It's still flesh. Ten finger, ten toes. It's... But that, that is spirit is spirit. And so people don't want to say they can't have been born again, still doing what they were doing before salvation. Now, there's a group of people who right now have set up in church, grew up in church and have learned to take grace in vain. Here's that are anything less than broken. You can keep those to yourself. God is not moved by witchcraft tears seducing tears, uh, fake tears, you know, uh, pity, uh, feel sorry for me kind of thing, even though I'm going to go back and do what I want to do. Uh, brokenness is another conversation. To fall on the rock and be broken, at least the rock fall on you and crush you to powder. It's a different conversation. A lot of people in the church service could get convicted and cry and weep and things of this nature with the mentality that I'm going to sin again and I'm going to repent again. It's only so long you could take fire in your bosom before you get burned. It's only so long you could keep saying, Lord, I repent right before I drink communion. Before the bottom fall out your life. You go from 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 deceiving and lying to getting pregnant or getting someone's daughter pregnant to ending up in an abortion clinic, all never leaving church. You done went from, from, from growing up in church, uh, clean, to being a sinner and a fornicator, to now being a murderer and in iniquity at the blink of an eye. At the blink of an eye. That's why some people looked at me funny when I said that adultery is the big brother to uh, fornication. Hmm? Yeah. You fornicate, you fornicate, you fornicate. It's a spirit. You get married and say, now nah, I'm good. And that spirit said, let's see. 
Then you look up, especially around that second year of, 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 of warfare and chaos and confusion, and you and your wife, you and your husband, both cheat, both in adultery. But then again, you never gave this, you never was not that spirit. You just brought it into a holy matrimony. So here's a, a person who not saved getting baptized in water. When they come up, they come up still a person not saved who just went in water. The water won't save them. It can't save them. And liken to someone with lust, perverted tendency, masturbation, porn, uh, um, you know, uh, fornication. Then they get married and it, it, it's still there. It don't leave. It's, it feels like it owns you. It, it belongs to you. That's why the spirit say, I, I shall return back. Even when we get it out, I shall return back to my house, to my house from whence I came. It, 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 he have to, it have to be proven to him it's not his house. The only way it's proven to him is when he show up and see someone else live there called Holy Ghost. If you come back in this clean, swept garnish, we pray for you. The unclean spirit ran off the, it, you know, but it didn't go no further than your car. That's why, if you ask me, churches have to stop believing God will save you today and fill you next year and mature you the next year after that, you know, you have to believe God that we, to, for people to confess and repent and be saved and filled. Like now. There's some waiting for them. There's something waiting for them. So we can't afford to send them out with nothing. They may not make it back to church. Acts 19 and 1, and ye have have ye received the Holy Ghost since you believe. Paul asked some disciples in, in Ephesus. He looked at a group of disciples. He said, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? That they responded that they had not heard of a such thing called the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. What? Have we received what? Have you received the Holy Spirit since you became saved? Since you be since you became since you became believers, we never heard of a such thing as the Holy Ghost. He, he looked at them and he and and, the, and Paul asked them a question. He says, "Who, who baptized you? How were you baptized?" Paul tells the disciple. He says, "How is how were you baptized?" Now you may say, "Well, uh huh." He said, what baptism have you received? They say they were baptized by John. And Paul explains that John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Oh, now that makes sense. His, ba his baptism was a baptism of repentance. And, and 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 so and so he 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 baptized you because you repented. It was a baptism of repentance, of repentance. So they're like, okay, huh? He said, yeah, yeah. So you you saved you you're a believer. You saved. He baptized you a baptism of repentance. But he tells the, them to believe in Jesus, and they are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul lays his hands on them, the Holy Spirit comes upon them, and they speak in tongues and prophesy. Oh, I can't wait to prophesy! I can't wait to prophesy. You're like you're like the man. Who they cursed his guilt, you know, because all his motives wrong. I can't wait to prophesy and tell people how to live, and I can't wait till they get. I'm gonna eat it up. You're like the man that they cursed his guilt because all his motives was wrong, and he thought the gift of God could be purchased with money. It's not about that. That's why so many churches hurt because they don't have discernment to look at certain people and say, you go over in the corner and sit down till your heart is right. Oh, 
Holy, you need the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you need the Holy Ghost. Because I don't trust your blah, 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 tongues. Your blah, 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 tongues. I don't trust them. Because everything about you is saying there's no spirit there. And so now, so these are made up. These are created by you tongues. Because signs follow them that believe. Humility is a sign. Meekness is a sign. Brokenness is a sign. Obedience, which is better than sacrifice. If he wanted bullocks and goats, I'd give it to him. But a broken and contrite heart and a broken and contrite spirit, God would not despise. If he wanted sacrifices of bullocks and goats, if that would be, I'd give it. But that's not what he wants. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, which means they're passing away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, I love this before we pray because God now becomes my father. And he begins to parent me. It's not just becoming new. For me because he snaps his finger uh, uh, like a genie or uh, like blink like a genie or a magic trick he begins to raise me as one raising a baby and giving me the no's and the yes of, 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 of Christianity or being born again he give me these these 66 books printed page living word written and it's by the by the by the by men of god inspired in the holy ghost so he began to train me i'm not just born again because he snapped his fingers i have to follow on to know some people think it's just like bam born again bam you're born again no no no, it's an actual training. It's like raising a child. It, that's why when, when I thought to give you meat, I thought otherwise. Like That's why some people, let's keep them on a sincere milk of the word right now. They're not ready for meat. That's why it's important to be in the Holy Ghost in the secret place. I wanted to say one thing to you, said the man of God, but I find that I can't. It's more needful for you if I talk to you just about common salvation, about being saved. That's what he said. That's what he said. I was going to talk to you about something else, but as I as I stand before you, I, I hear the Lord and just talk to them about being saved. You have people who say, pray for this, pray for that, pray for this, pray for that. And then I ask questions like, now the person we're praying for that you're asking for prayer, are they saved? No, they're not saved. What church they go to? No church. Well, then why are we asking God to bless them with cars and money and a spouse when we are not asking God to bless them with salvation? Everything they need is in salvation. You want to jump over salvation for a person who says, I don't like your church. I don't like your pastor. I don't want to be with your God. Look, I, look I'm, I'm just having fun. Well, I'm praying for you. Well, what are you praying for? Especially some of these mothers. I feel sorry for some of these mothers that, that's enabling their sons and their daughters into abortion clinics and prisons and backseat of cars. I feel bad for them. I feel bad for their children. I, but what about the man? 75% of black babies in single parent homes. So at least if you're going to open your legs to the wrong person, at least you're getting God and parent them the, the way God say parent them since you chose wrong. God be his judge, that infidel. But I 
don't know what good it's going to do for two blind folk to raise them. Anyway. Before I pray for you to have a job and a spouse and a car and, and some money, I'm going to pray God save you. I'm going to pray God save you. That he make you a new creature. That, that's the key to that he, that he saved you. That he saved you. Because as a parent, he begins to parent you. Talk to you. Clean you. Change you. Feed you. You know, chasing, convict, hug, kiss, edify, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine, he begin to raise you. You don't just be then it's not like that. It's work. It's following on to know. It's not digressing and leaving every summer and coming back every winter. Starting at ground. He looks at the people and he wants us saved and he wants us filled with his presence. Not, not just, not just, but with his presence. So that now you don't have to fight these things on your own. And sometimes you have to acknowledge that that last battle, that last warfare, it took so much out of me. I, 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 I talked to First Lady. I said, you do know, even if you didn't have shingles, to stand in ministry, was exhausting by itself. She said, I, 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 I thought I, I said, I know. It looked like you're just standing, hugging the whole church. But when it's in ministry, when it's ministry, it's almost like you, you ran three miles, four miles. Like it's, it's work. My daughter say, after she preached, I don't know how you have two messages a week. I don't know how you do it. Yesekosha Base Brosiki, Mese Rosata. When you just can't make up stuff and listen to someone else and say, Oh, I'll preach that. I'll do that. You know. Like when you empty out in prayer or, did it, or, or just show up with the Holy Spirit and just, I'm here, Lord. I'm here. May have nothing, but I'm here. May be on like like trying to catch your breath. But having to all the stand have learned to stay. And when you and when you can't stand, you lay in there. But anything except go back. Anything except go back. 
And then have days you beat your own self up because you know you could have been a better steward and a better Christian and a better representative of Christ. And you 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 know you you know you still got a flash. <laughs> Come on, lift those hands before the Lord. We, we're going to have prayer. And it don't take long to have prayer. And so we're going to have prayer. I don't, uh, I'm, my feet not on the ground, but whoever's supposed to start praying, pray. Just start us praying. Uh, thank you, Lord God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord God. Uh, thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for another opportunity to come before your throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Uh, Father God in heaven, we thank you for everything, all you've done for us, all you're doing and going to do for us. Uh, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for life and breath, health and strength, covering us and keeping us, sending angels before us to keep us in the way. We thank you for this day that you have made. Uh, we will find something to rejoice about and be glad in it. Uh, Father God, we uh, I come before you um, on behalf of the young men uh, that are part of this ministry and all around the world, Father God, that are on your radar and that you're concerned about and that are yours. Uh, whether they're walking in your light or not, um, we're still yours, Father God. Uh, you just want us to receive the rewards of obedient children. Father God, on behalf of the young men, I pray your will concerning them, uh, that they will uh, fall in love with you like never before, that they will, you are your word, and the word it was with God, and the word is God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, that they fall in love with you, uh, fall in love with the word, fall in love with um, living righteously, fall in love with being labeled as holy because you said, uh, be thou holy for I am holy. Uh, let them fall in love with you and not in love with the world. Let them have a desire to um, live for you and not for the world. Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, uh, let them every day, Father God, start off with, Father, I uh, repent for any and all sins that I've committed that I'm aware of and unaware of. I repent, God, I'm sorry. I ask that you forgive me and that you blood wash me and cover me and let there be nothing in between you and me. Let them start every day like that. Let them go throughout the day like that, Father God. Uh, Father God, I pray that you let them not fall prey, Father God, to the snares and diverse temptations of this world. Let them not fall prey to the traps and to the schemes, Father God, that uh, their adversary, the devil, has set um, to, um, to uh, confuse them, to entrap them, to steal, kill, and destroy them and from them. In the name of Jesus, Father God, let them be obedient to you, Father God, so that they will live obedient to their parents. You said, um, uh, children, obey your parents in the Lord, uh, for this is right, for this is good, for this is how you want them to live. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I pray your will, Father God, for the traps that are set for them, Father God, social media, in the name of Jesus, Father God, and in, in, in educational institutions. The enemy has seems like he has infiltrated everywhere, Lord God. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you shield them and cover them from any and all unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. For your glory, according to your will, Father God. I know you want them, I know you want your children in general to have a tolerance for things, Father God. I pray you put a spirit, a holy no in them and a holy yes in them in the name of Jesus. And I pray you give them visions, Father God, in the name of Jesus, of how good life it can be in you and will be in you in the name of Jesus. And I pray you um, prepare them in the name of Jesus for the evil that is to come if they live to see it in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Um, I thank you for your will for the young man, Lord God. I thank you for those that are involved in church and that have been faithful and that are trying in the name of Jesus, Lord God, let no weapon formed against them prosper. I pray you continue to instruct them and teach them in the way that they should go and, get, and that you guide them uh, with your eye, God, in the name of Jesus. And I thank you and I pray that you put uh, it in those that are over them, Father God, to, um, to also teach them in the way they should go according to your will, according to the word of God. Uh, you said by mercy and truth, 
iniquities are purged, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, by grace and mercy, are we saved? Uh, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And the uh, young men need you, and those that are over the young men need you as well. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. And so I thank you, Lord God. Please have your way. Also, Father God, in Jesus' name, I come before you on behalf of the men, Father God, uh, the men that are husbands in the name of Jesus, Father God. One scripture that comes to mind quite often, Father God, is that only by pride cometh contention in the name of Jesus, Father God. Let your husbands to your daughters, Father God, be mature enough. Let us remember, Lord God, that only by pride cometh contention. Are we in pride? Is our spouse in pride? Is the spirit of the ungodly spirit of pride just in the midst and trying to disrupt things, Father God? I pray that your husbands be the husbands to your daughters that you want us to be. I pray that you also put us in the word, in your word, so that we fall in love with you and your word, and so that we please you and by and 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 that you approve of us as husbands not we approve of ourselves as husbands but that your word inspects us in the name of Jesus that your word lines us up and puts us where we should supposed to be as husbands so that we can be the husbands that you want us to be to your daughters, Father God. Uh, Father God, um, I pray that we have an attraction um, to holiness and righteousness, Father God, spiritually that spills that 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 is that is manifested naturally in the name of Jesus, Father, Father God. Let us um, remember um, our, the wives of our youth. Let us remember that your word declares that we should enjoy her uh, in our vanity in the name of Jesus, Lord God, all the days of our lives. Father God, let us uh, remember that no good thing you declared in your word that you're a son and a shield and you will give grace and glory and no good thing would you withhold from them that walk uprightly. Father, in Jesus name, let us walk uprightly before you so that no, you will, you will not withhold the good things you have for us and for our, our marriages, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Let us walk in obedience, put it in us to walk in obedience, even the more, Father God, you've started all of us out that liveth with a portion of faith, Father God. Uh, let us build on that. That, Lord God, let us be mature husbands and, and give us control, Holy Spirit, over our spiritual and natural tongues, over our spiritual and natural eyes, over our spiritual and natural ears and minds in the name of Jesus, Lord God, so that no corruptible thing will depart out of our mouths, so that we operate out of the mind of Christ, Lord God, and have godly attractions to our wives, have godly attractions to things, and let us despise and hate sin and all those things, Father God, that would eat at the fabric of us being the husbands that you want us to be to the daughters, to your daughters. And if any, and, and those husbands, Father God, that may have an unsaved spouse, Father God, Father God, if you say when a man's ways please you, he make even their, and you make even their enemies be at peace with them. Unfortunately, Father God, there are people that might be married, Father God, that are married, that might not be on the same page in you, that might not both be safe. But Father God, if we conduct ourselves in the way we should, Father God, I believe the believing husband, Father God, can lead the unbelieving spouse to you and vice versa uh, in the name of Jesus, Father God. So Father God, I pray you, have your way with us as your husbands. Let us want for nothing so that we can be the providers that you want us to be in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Let us always humble ourselves and know that with you, we can do all things outside of you. We can do nothing. We're dead in the water outside of you, without you. That's just what I believe, Father God. If not by your grace and mercy, Father God, the enemy would have sifted us as we all wheat already. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your will for the husbands that you cover us and keep us and make us the heads of our homes that we should be according to your will and that you want us to be, not to beat our chests, but to be the servants that you want us to be, Father God, for you did say, let the, the, the greatest of them serve the least of them. In the name of Jesus, right King of glory. So in Jesus' name, I thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to say something to you on behalf of the husband, the young men and the husbands in the name of Jesus and let no weapon formed against us prosper in the name of Jesus, cover us and keep us from any and all backlash, retaliation and witchcraft and opposition to your will for us. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. 
Amen. Father God, I come to you, Lord God, this evening, Lord God, on behalf of the sisters, Lord God, on behalf of my young sisters, Lord God, that are dating, Lord God. God, God, I ask God that you will order their steps in you, Lord God. God, I ask that you will lead them and guide them, Lord God, on who to date, Lord Jesus. God, I ask that you will open up their spiritual eyes, Lord God, that you will open up their spiritual ears, Lord God that they will hear your voice, Lord God, on who they should be dating, Lord God, and who would come to them, Lord God, that you would just show them, Lord God, the intentions that they would have, Lord God, that they be not deceived, Lord God, on who they should date, Lord God. God, I ask God that you will put a hedge of protection around them, Lord Jesus, that you would give them understanding, Lord God, of how important it is, Lord God, to be in your will, Lord God. Mm -hmm. How important it is, Lord God, to be in your will, Father, to be connected to who you send to them, Lord Jesus. So, God, I ask God once again that you will order their steps in you, Lord Jesus, to give them understanding, Lord God, that is, it, it is important to be with who you've sent them to be with, Lord God. Help them to focus on you, Lord God, until you do send that man for them, Lord Jesus. God, God, I ask God that you will help them, Lord God, to be content with you, Lord God. It says in your word, God, that whatever so state I'm in, Lord God, to learn to be content, Lord God. So God, I ask God that you would teach them, God, to just wait on you, Lord God. And as they date, Lord God, help them to learn how to date in a godly way, Lord God, in a holy way, Lord God. God, I ask that you would even keep them physically, Lord God. We all have feelings, Lord God, but help them, Lord God, to just know that it, they don't have to be in any physical sin, any fornication, Lord God, as they date, Lord God, that you can date and still be saved, Lord God, that you can date and still live holy, Lord God. And then, God, I ask God that you would just, as I keep saying, Lord God, you would send them someone that is on the same page, Lord God, that, that has the same desires to live holy for you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord God. Cover them under your blood, Lord Jesus. Give them the mind of you, Lord God, the mind of Christ, Lord God. God, I ask God that you would just take away the loneliness, Lord God, and even the, uh, the, the rush, Lord God, to even just rush to be married, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, until you send them someone, Lord God, that they're married to you, Lord Jesus. That they're married to you, Lord God, until you send them someone, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord God. God, let them know that their worth is in you, Lord God, and that it's all about you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray. God, I continue to just continue to ask, Lord God, that you just let them know that their, their worth is in you, Lord God. Sometimes as women, Lord God, that are single, that are out dating, Lord God, we get so insecure, Lord God, thinking that we don't have, if we're not married, Lord God, or that if we're single, Lord God, that we're not important and that we're not beautiful, Lord God. But God, I thank you, Lord God, that I can testify, Lord God, that with our security is in you, Lord God. It's in you, Lord God. So, God, I ask you, Lord God, as they wait on you, the man that you have for them, Lord God, that you will secure them, Lord God, that you will wrap your loving arms around them, Lord Jesus. And they wait on the man that you have for them, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. I give you honor. I give you glory, Lord God. Teach them how to wait, Lord God. Teach them how to date, even if they have someone, Lord in Jesus' name, I pray, God, I thank you and I praise you. I give you honor and I give you glory for this opportunity, Lord God, to even pray for this, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray, God, I thank you for your presence on this line on tonight, God. God, I thank you, God, because you're concerned with everything that concerns us, Lord God. So I thank you for this. And it's in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed Redeemer, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the single women under the sound of my voice, even the heart of the single woman, Lord, that may be pondering many things. Where do I fit? What is my role? Father, you created the woman for a purpose, God. And having been a single woman, Father, one can feel like something is missing from life because of the purpose, Father. But your word lets us know that your thoughts are not our thoughts and your ways are not our ways. And that the unmarried woman careth for the things of the Lord, that she 
she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. Help the single women to know, God, that your will is perfect. Your timing in their lives is perfect, Father, that it is in you where they should live and move and have their being. Savior, draw the single women closer to your heart. Give the single women a true hunger, a thirst for righteousness in these evil days. Give the wisdom what to do, when to do, how to do in Jesus' name, how to conduct themselves as a godly single woman, rooted and grounded in you, Father. Father, I believe it's you that teach us how to love you back. Teach the single women how to love you with all their heart, all their mind, soul, and strength to trust you, Father. Help to know that you are not a man, that you lie not, nor the son of man, that you should repent. Cover the single women coming and going, Father. Give wisdom with saving and spending, Father God, how to conduct themselves, Father. Father, cover the uncovered in Jesus' name. Put a yes, Lord, down on the inside in Jesus' name. Feel voids as only you can do, Father. Father, there is no failure in you. Search the hearts and minds of the single women and take out what's not pleasing to you, Father. Put in the single women how to occupy until you ordain a change, how to conduct herself in a way pleasing to you, Father. Help the single women to hear what they cannot hear, to see what they cannot see in the spirit. You're a good, good father. So lead on, good shepherd. Lead on. Seal the single women within your will, Father God, and for the time you of this, in this time in their lives. For there's no safer place in all the world than in your will. Lord, rebuke confusion and instability and insecurities in the name of Jesus. Wrap your loving arms around the lonely God. Strengthen the weak and the tired in the name of Jesus. Give the single women a reach for your will alone for you know the plans that you have for every single woman under the sound of my voice. Let no weapon form prosper in the name of Jesus. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. In Jesus' all-sufficient name, I thank you and I give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Father God, tonight I humbly come before you. I humbly Humble, humble myself before you tonight, Lord God, as I come in behalf of marriages. Father, in the name of Jesus, one of the greatest things you gave us was marriage. Well, Lord, bless husbands and wives to understand that when they first met each other, they were already who they are until you changed them. Bless and enable these young these marriages to know that arguing, pushing, judging, each other is where love, patience, endurance come in our lives. Bless them to know, oh God, to wait patiently on you, to trust you in their, in their marriage, waiting for you to change each other comes in marriage is what God honors. I pray tonight, oh God, for marriages that you have first place in their lives. Father, after years of being married, I learned early that for you to have first place in a marriage, in a relationship, is the best thing that we can wait on. I pray tonight, oh God, that they'll follow you daily. Follow you daily. Read the word with each other. Pray for each other. Follow you. Oh God, I pray that they'll from time to time to read 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. Bless these marriages tonight from this day forward to know to commit to praying for each other, loving each other unconditionally, trusting, trusting, trusting each other, Lord God, respecting, respecting, respecting each other. Oh God, tonight, I pray tonight, oh God, above all, seeking you daily. And it, for husbands and wives, it's the worst, best thing they can do. And bless these marriages, to know that 
when we stop looking, the wives stop looking to the husband, then the husband stop looking to the wives for the needs that he and she cannot meet. It frees the husband and wife to meet the ones that they can. The need for intimacy and the shared responsibility for family and marriages. You're the head of the marriages. From this day forward, take total and complete control for one of the greatest things we have on earth, marriages. And oh God, bless and enable them how to pass on to their children love, respect, being honest, sincere with each other. Bless their children at home to learn how to be the husbands and wives that you require them to be. It starts from them. We just thank you so much. As It's been on my mind for a couple of weeks. Marriages, marriages, marriages. We lift them up before you, oh God. Your will be done in every marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. I come in behalf of seniors tonight, Lord God. I'm one of them tonight. And I've learned over the years, Lord God, that you and I, you'll never forleave, leave us nor forsake us when we're old and gray-headed. You won't leave us or forsake us, Lord God. But you'll strengthen us the more in you. Lord God, tonight I pray that you bless us seniors. Bless us to be able to use wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, oh God, how to pass on to the younger women. The younger seniors, oh God, how to live godly lives. I pray tonight that you strengthen us spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, oh God, to trust you more and more each day. That you keep us quiet. You keep us in Bible study. You keep us in prayer. Oh God, you fill us with healing as never before. Keep us to stay focused on you. Our strength is made perfect in your weakness. Strengthen us, seniors, tonight. That you can use us for your glory, your honor, and your praise. We give all glory, honor, and praise to you. We thank you for these years. We thank you for what you brought us for the, over these years. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. And we tonight, I pray that we seniors recommit, rededicate our lives to you and be in our senior golden years, what and what you would have us be and do. I pray and ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, the righteous. Amen, amen, and amen. Father, I come before you humble, Lord, to say thank you again will continue to wake us up this morning, Lord, to see another day. Another day for us to continue to praise you and to worship you. And continue, Lord, to love on us always and forever. We pray, I pray to you, Lord, that um thank you for continuing to bless us with our jobs that we have. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to provide for us food and shelter. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, for your word from the book of Matthew, chapter 7, 7 through 8. When it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. We pray, I pray to you, Lord, that um, no matter what we go through in life, whether we are our highest and we are our lowest, we want, we want to say thank you, Lord, for continue to be our provider as you always been. And I pray, Lord, for those who don't know or those who stress, I pray, Lord, that you will help them and let them know that it's you who is providing for them. And let them know, Lord, that it's you who continue to help to keep them on their feet. We pray, Lord, that um that you continue to bless us with our finances, Lord. And we pray, Father, that um we just want to say, Lord, thank you again 
for who you are and what your son Jesus Christ did for us. We just can't thank you enough, Lord, for continuing to love on us and continue to show us love, Lord. And we want to say thank you, Lord. We will continue to praise you always and forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we love and we bless you and we thank you. For you have declared in your word that healing is the children's bread and that by your stripes we are healed. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I touch and agree with these, your, your sons and your daughters, that every sickness and every disease that has attached itself to one of your sons and one of your daughters, even if it's self-inflicted, this is where grace this is where mercy come into play. Let grace kiss one side of our face and mercy the other. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, because you were wounded and bruised and the, and the chastisement of our peace is upon you. And by your stripes, we are healed. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, every sickness, every disease, every virus, every bacteria, even things that can come, new forms of COVID, flu, things of that have, will kill 60,000 people a year. I pray, Father, where it sounds foolish or not, let it not be named among these that are members of the Peculiar People Church. I want to thank you that we have not lost one to COVID. And when I look at the numbers, the staggering numbers of people who have died, I can only see ourselves as people who have not just been blessed but favored. And we don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted. But I have dealt, my Lord, with herpes. And I have dealt with HIV. And I have dealt with AIDS. And I have dealt with diabetes. And I have dealt with malignant cancer. I have dealt with lupus. I've seen your people hurting. I've seen them struggling. I've seen them sick. But I want to thank you that we have held on to the faith. Now, I ask for supernatural abilities in you. I ask for um, miracles, signs, and wonders. I ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that some be healed as they go and some be healed instantaneous. That as we release our faith that we have with my pastor taught me, a monument of faith. Father, in Jesus' name, Nothing is too hard for you. You said if you were hungry, you would not ask us for bread. Why well, think it a thing incredible God can raise one from the dead? And the question still is asked by some, Son of man, can these dead bones live? Father, in Jesus' name, yes, these dead bones can live. I ask as you turned Job's life around and gave him back twice as much as he had before. I ask that their dead bones live, and I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, as you have healed lepers and healed people from all kinds of diseases, that we walk in that same level of supernatural abilities, with those same supernatural testimonies. Father, in Jesus' name, as you heal from rape and heal from incest and heal, Father, from trauma and take that obesity to the numbers you want it to be and take that blood pressure and that cholesterol level and those LDL and HDL levels where you want them to be simply because of the healing that happened down on the inside. Heal our mind, heal our emotions, heal our spirit, heal our bodies. In the name of Jesus Christ, I don't ask as one begging. I don't ask as, as one outside, but as your son. Simply as your son. I'm not asking as your pastor. I'm not asking as a prophetic, apostolic prophetic minister. I'm asking as your son. For if a son ask a father for anything, would he give him a serpent? Would he give him a stone? Father, in Jesus' name, just as your son praying for his brothers and his sisters do the miraculous and blow someone's mind with your love 
and your power, your grace and your mercy, who thought that this would be my lot in life, and I now have what, what will eventually be what killed me. I ask that you turn that thing around for your glory. Whatever we die from, let it not be from the thing that right now is present on someone's life. In the name of Jesus Christ, this is my prayer, Lord. I love and I bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and we are dismissed. God bless you, saints.